We're here at the Industrial Immersive. How has the event been for you? It's been really good. We, uh, it's good to see a lot of people that we've uh, we previously kind of bump into. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's like, like more of a catch-up session, uh, more than anything. It's, it's good just to kind of spread, you know, our beliefs and what a digital twin should be, yeah. and uh, and kind of show off any kind of new stuff we've got going on. So yeah, it's been good. Yeah. Just for people who aren't familiar with Visco and what you guys do, do you mind just giving me an overview and even talking a little bit about what digital twinning is? Sure. Uh, so we, we call our platform, we call the, it's a meta twin, basically. Mm -hmm. And basically, we're trying to converge a lot of uh, what we call separated silos into one singular application, mm -hmm. essentially. And then delivering that in different methods like VR, desktop, mobile devices, etc. So that's kind of the metaverse part of it. Uh, but our kind of definition of like a de digital twin is, I think we kind of fall back on that NASA kind of definition where we're saying it should be a full re replica of, of a physical asset, whether it be a refinery or a wind farm or an offshore asset. That's kind of what we feel like, make sure every single detail's there. So when you look at it, you know exactly what you're looking at. I love that. And you know, when it comes to the non-technical audience mm -hmm. that are really trying to understand where does digital twinning come into come into motion? Where does where does working with someone like you? What the impact does it make? I remember the first time I ever met Jonathan from your office. Yeah. He was basically taking us on a virtual tour in 3D right. with a video game controller through a cruise ship, and literally where where the manholes were, where the light fixtures were, where the wiring was being done. All of that was, it, you were able to see it. From a client standpoint, what is the impact that that makes? And really for the people that are watching and curious, what, how, it, how, how do you leverage this for maintenance, which is something I know that you guys are into, how does that all come together? It's about making everything kind of, being able to see everything in one place. And being able to find things quicker than you usually would do, because typically a lot of things are in silos and using, well, our main focus is like on the workflows. So when we talk about inspection and maintenance, the main focus is very much on making sure we can simplify that process, make it more efficient and make it uh, as safe as possible and not have as many people have to take as many trips offshore as a big part of it. And so that's where we have like a training application as well, where you can practice some of those procedures onshore before you go offshore so you know exactly what you're doing. And all of this is just kind of using a digital twin as a foundation to that, because all of your data is there. It's like a one-stop shop for everything you need. Uh, so even on a basic level, even if you just need to look for one particular tag and the documents related to that, it takes you two seconds where you can just type it in, boom, there you go, you found everything you need. You know, I was in one of the talks yesterday and they were talking about how in, you know, not too long ago, people when they had you know, large work sites or they had major machinery that they were having to do maintenance on. Sometimes they would have to go into a basement and find a binder and figure right. out what are the specs of this right. thing. This changes the game in that and oh, the yeah. fact that it takes something, what, six months, what used to take six months to figure out or you can do it in a business day? Pretty much a couple of hours. If that, we've seen some people do it within a couple of minutes. And what's great about our software tool now is that when you find that particular tag or the system that you're looking for, even on a large scale asset, um, it will show you exactly from your location, how to get to that location, where your, all your inspection main, maintenance points are, and then you just document all your findings, put it back into your system, and then main, you know maintenance can take over, do their job, and it just makes things very simple. All right, and then lastly, when it comes to people who might be intimidated, I'm talking about potential prospects here. Sometimes it can be intimidating to choose a vendor, to choose what company you work with. What are some things that people should be thinking about or what are maybe just even a mistake that they don't want to make? Yeah, I think the best way to look at it is it's always going to be an investment. I think you need to invest in a company or a vendor that mm -hmm. is, is going to look out for your best interests, basically. Um, at least in my opinion, I think um, finding someone who's going to be the right partner and maximize the value of that tool for you. Um, like we've seen really great values coming out from our tool. 
and uh, I think it's just it's just finding the right partner for it that's going to be go on a journey with you, right? right? So because it's an investment in you know fixing your data, but that doesn't have to be necessarily do it all and then pick a vendor. You can do it gradually instead of making a large investment at once. Do it over time. Um, before I let you go. I was curious, how did you get into this? Like, what was your career path where you ended up here at Visco? That is a that is a that's a different journey. I started in game design originally. Um, I didn't want I need I had debt, and so I got an offer for an animation company in Norway because student debt needed to be paid. So I went for that first, wow. and then I happened to come into Visco just by chance and started as a technical animator or the lead technical animator and then moved on to project side and then as project manager for all of our recall projects and now I'm the VP of operations over here in the States. That's well, another long story we don't need to get into. Well, we, we should get into it at some point. Thank right. you so much, Thank Peter. You very much.